but uh, Olivia.
Like this. I saw it. 
I need you to like pay attention, like seriously, like because I'm about to say a word that's going to get your mind going, and that is not my intent. My intent is to give you direction as a pastor of a church. And I know my father, they're, they're out of town this weekend, and my mom would be completely on board. But I know we're missing people today, but this is our understanding. This is our reality. Luke chapter 6, I'm going to be reading from that before we receive communion today. But I, I want to set some things up. Let me read this first in the New King James Version. I'm going to read again the message, but it says this. And, and when I say this word, I, I want you, I'm going to explain it probably right there because you need to understand it before you start to get the wrong idea. And right away you're going to be going, what's it to do with communion? It has everything to do with communion today. Luke 6 says, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spite me spitefully use you to him who strikes you on the one cheek off of the other also and from him who takes away your cloak do not withhold your tunic either give to everyone who asks of you and from him who takes away your goods do not ask them back and just as you want men to do to you you also do to them likewise verse 32 says but if you love those who love you what credit is that to you for even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, there's that word again, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Enemies. Enemies. That's a tough word. I was looking for other translations, you know, that got the, the Bible. <laughs> Give me a better word, Lord. But the truth is, is we got to get the picture and know and understand this, because it shows up through the Old Testament, shows up through the New Testament. The enemies of God are, are they're not enemies. Our enemies are not enemies to us. They're enemies against God Almighty, against the things of God, against the kingdom things. It's not a natural thing. It's not an a, a athletic thing, a team thing. It's not a national thing, a national pride thing about America or another country. And it, it's definitely, for sure, not a political thing. The enemies that he's talking about that were to love, mind you, are the enemies to him. The enemies to, to him. Because the word tells us that we are either for him or against him. There's no middle ground. And so when we respond as the body of Christ and as a church, I realize I'm speaking to a very limited amount. There's so many that, that, that are not hearing this message today. I don't know what some of the messages that people are hearing today, but I, I would love and I would pray and I would hope that this would be at the heart of these messages. Years ago, years and years and 20 and 30 and 1990s and see what the polls, back in the 90s, I remember the, the theme and the heart and, 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 and the, the years and the, the, the hours of youth as well as adults and young adults and in this church and we got chapel and prayer and asking God for some things and seeing sometimes those things delayed or not ever happening and, and, and along with many many others across this nation and other nations praying for America and praying for the, the, the heart of our country the heart of our nation at the heart of all the prayer I remember was that God we're not looking for a legislative victory we're looking for a victory of the heart of our nation we're not looking for law. We're looking for love. We're looking for understanding concerning who you are, God, and what you're about. And then as, 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 as more situations happen in the, 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 the 2000s, in the, 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 
the attack of the, the church and, and their, their view of, of homosexuality began to happen and, and our, our language was having to be watched and adjusted and we look at the word of God and we just try and understand it and, and we know we always say well, you know we hate the sin once again a hard word it means hate we hate the sin but not the sinner but yet we struggle with that because we don't do that very well we can say it all we want but we don't do it very well and what the Lord is telling us here is that we have to love the enemies of God and what I saw yesterday in a limited fashion was was an opportunity to begin just that in a beautiful way because right now there is nothing that has been given to the body of Christ in the natural. There's nothing different from yesterday to today. And there may be nothing different that we see in the natural ever. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you honestly, and I believe this from, from our heart and from the body of Christ's heart, you can legislate your morals, you can legislate what you see or understand in the word of God to be true in a nation all you want, but it doesn't mean you're gonna win the nation's heart. It doesn't mean that you're gonna show the love of Jesus even if you pass a law or if you change a law. Are you feeling this? Are you getting this? Are you understanding me today? And I don't know if you're understanding yet where this is going with communion, but it's going there, trust me. This is no time through Facebook, through the internet, through social media, through your your, your reactions with, with your friends and your family. This is this is no time to celebrate. Heaven wasn't celebrating yesterday. Heaven was mourning yesterday. Heaven was mourning. The angelic forces in heaven were mourning the, the hurt and the anguish upon people who did it and aren't still getting the very heart and the nature of God. And that's why they're against those things. It's because their hearts are hurt. And they're trying to okay their hearts. But there's nothing you can do on earth that will okay your heart. Because your heart was created and your spirit was created by Almighty God. And the only thing that brings satisfaction and true comfort and true peace, even in the midst of a storm, is the knowing that you're on his side. And he's on your side. And you're not enemies with God. And that you're not an enemy with God. And that you're not an enemy of God. The church today should not be celebrating any political victory or any ideology victory or any any social victory or any moral victory. Today, the church, and what we're going to do is we're gonna we're going to honor our Lord by being like Him. And when we do communion, we're gonna do it as we think about Him, as we think on Him. And what would He do? Where would He be? He wouldn't be around those who were hurting and those who were poking with signs. And he wouldn't be shouting in the midst of a, a, a social media platform, you lost, you, you, you're you done, you're over. He would be there at their, their feet and say, can I wash your feet? Can I serve you? And that's what many in our church was doing yesterday. They were out by the river. They, were, they weren't celebrating some, some, some national event. They were serving the lost. They were serving the hurting. I was hearing from my sister, this is my friend. And you prayed for him. And she met another, saw another friend out there. Luke chapter 6, again, through the message version, says this. truth, I say this. Love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, give wrap up your best coat, make it a present to them. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. Here's a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself, what would you want people to do for you? Then grab that initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable, you expect a pat on the back. Run of the mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. 
If you only give what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest of pawnbrokers does that. I tell you, love your enemies. Help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives towards us. Generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst. Our Father is kind. You be kind. I'm going to tell you something. With all of my heart, I believe the Word of God. I believe what it says concerning life and concerning the children of this nation and the unborn of this nation. I believe with all my heart. And I pray and I spend time battling because I know it's a responsibility while I'm on this earth and I'm in this land to do that. To contend for righteousness. I have never been around more people who claim homosexuality in their life than I have in the last three or four years working at our high school, working with the athletes of our high school. And I do not believe that the lifestyle is correct or right, but they probably receive more love and more of my attention and more of my generosity than those that I know who love the Lord. Is our nation's morality changing? I don't know. I don't know. Some of you say, well, we'll find out in November. We'll find out in two more years. Or we'll find out in four more years. No. The only way we're going to find out is that if we love people unconditionally and their hearts begin to change and turn because of who we are in their lives. Come on, Jesus. That's what changes people. You guys. And that's what we've been talking about last week. You change people. So today we're going to take communion. We're going to receive it. We're going to hold it. And then we're going to stand. And if you have your family together today, Gather the family. If you're missing your family members or you've got loved ones in the church, grab somebody. And today I want to take communion today. I want to honor, and they're going to sing this song, and then we're going to go into worship after that and continue. We're going to sing this song, Amazing Grace. His mercy is never ending. As we get ready and as we receive communion this morning. And we're going to pray as we receive communion this morning. Jesus, be alive in be alive in the church. Be alive in the body of Christ. Share with love. Show mercy. Let me be in a place and a platform where I can show love this week. It's hard. You may say, but wait a minute. It's, we're always having to take the low road. We're always having to be humble. That's why it looks like we're outnumbered all the time. It doesn't matter. God's not trying to win a popularity contest, regardless of what you think and what the media tries to tell you. God and Christianity is not trying to win a popularity contest. We're trying to be real and truthful. And if we do that, we'll be fine. The problem is, is that we're not doing that very well. And that's why it looks really bad. If we do what God's called us to do, if we love those who persecute us, we love those who don't agree with us, we love them well. Are you okay? Are you getting this this morning? Are we, are we in tune this morning? I'm sorry if, if you got to go take a bunch of signs out your window. I'm sorry if you got to get on Facebook and edit some posts this morning. But the church and the body of Christ is not a political agent. We are a spiritual change in our country. And the only way we will be is if we understand that we get it right. Let's stand this morning. They're bringing communion forward. You do not have to be a member of our church to receive communion with us. You have to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. You don't even have to believe what I just said this morning. You can take communion on your own in some other way. But I'm telling you this morning, is we are honoring the one who would come before those who are hurting today. And I don't know why. I don't understand all the threats that maybe they feel or they think is going to happen. But I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter. Jesus would be amongst those who are hurting today. He would be around those who are hurting today. His thoughts would be toward those that are hurting today. He would be the love. He would be the balm. He would be the healing agent. He would make himself available. He would say, if you need my shirt, you can have a gift wrapped coat too. Amen. So God bless you as you receive communion this morning. They're just going to play and worship as you receive it. As you gather your family, you gather people around. Just pray. Take a moment to pray. And you guys just go on into the rest of the worship as you need to.
We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers of this earth, but of those in the heavenlies trying to destroy the works of Almighty God. Case in point, you got good old Peter, right? He just loves Jesus. He loves his friends. He loves this man that he's been ministering with, and he's getting arrested. So what does Peter do? He tries to go all David, right? He tries to go all David on a guard. What's he do? He goes up and he cuts off his what? His ear. Thank God. The head would have been quite a miraculous miracle. It would have been pretty cool to see. But he cuts off his ear. And what does Jesus do? He takes that ear and he says, we're not in the Old Testament, brother, anymore. There's a new covenant. I am him. And we are going to love people. And we are going to show grace and mercy. And then he gets on a cross. And those that are killing him, those that are taking his life, those that are piercing him, you think you go through tough things as being a Christian. You think social media has got it all in on you and it's bad and it's tough out there in your job place representing they have not put you on a cross. They have not pierced your side. They have not put stripes on your back. They have not put a crown of thorns on your head. And what does our Jesus in the new covenant, what does he say? I'm going to take the head of the one who's accusing me. And this is how I'm going to do it. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have saved me. So much better your way, Lord God. So much better your way. Father God, this morning, we go after the head of sickness. We go after the head of disease. We continue to pray for, for, for Brenda Rollins and, and, and for Brenda Ballou. We continue to pray for miracles that go after the head of, of, of the disease that would kill, still, and destroy. But you said that you give us life and that more abundantly. So God, we continue to pray for the tumors to, to, to disappear from Katarina and from Brent. And we pray, Father God, that you would bless those that we don't even know about today that are struggling with sickness and disease. And we do, we go after the heads of those, those spirits of sickness and infirmities. And we want to come back with victory. We believe for victory. It's in you, Father God, that you took the stripes upon your back for our healing and for our well-being. And so God, we give you praise and glory in that. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, your way is better. Hallelujah, your way is better. Thank you, Jesus. All hell, Jehovah, your way is better. Your way is great. We thank you. Let's give it a hand this morning. God, you are good. You're good. You're good. We're going to get ready to receive our tithes and offerings this month. We have two uh, offerings here this morning. One is for missions in just a moment. This is our general offering. And just invite you to bring it forth as we continue to just sing hallelujah. He's made a way, amen, and it's a good way. Let's, let's worship him as we give this morning. God bless you as you give this morning. Go ahead, guys.
Katarina, surrounded by love. You know, you got busy weeks, but there are people in our church who, if the Lord puts them on your heart to pray, pray. I want to see the miracles. The hand of God come in and touch the situations. This week, um, I want to invite you out to some things that are kind of beginning and starting up. Um, Stephanie uh, came to me at the same time. Another awesome lady, Esther, came to me, and they both kind of came in a different angle with the same thing. And so I want you, if you're single this morning, if you're single and then through divorce or through being widowed or just because um, you haven't met that most incredible man of God yet in your life, uh, there's a couple of classes that they, they feel through, through Right Now Ministries and through study. Uh, the word of God together, that, that there's a season for you. And that's all I can explain it is that, you know, that it's it's not odd for me to get one person to say, hey, I'd like to do this, but to have two within one week wow. that didn't even know about each other. And so one of them is going to be on Monday night at Stephanie's home. Stephanie, would you stand and just say hi to everybody? If you want to hear more about that, you can call the office or you can talk with Stephanie afterwards. And uh, she'd love to host you on Monday nights. And in two weeks, not this Wednesday, the women are finishing up our Obviously, the struggle was real, but in two Wednesdays, uh, Esther is going to be uh, leading a study here on Wednesday night. Esther, you want to stand up and say hi? I know a lot of people think so. She's going to be leading a study here on Wednesday night. This this Wednesday night, uh, Ace Overcomers is still going. Like I said, Struggle or Drill is finishing. I'm going to be starting up a class for about seven weeks, and, and we'll go through a couple of breaks with uh, the 31st and uh, Thanksgiving. But it's called Loving Your Kids on Purpose. The ultimate thing is parenting. But I'm going to tell you something. It's such a book on discipleship. If you are new to the things of the Lord, if you're new to accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I, I can't imagine a better study to go through than to understand how God treats us as his children, truly treats us well and rightly. And in return, you're going to learn how to love your children, your grandchildren, even in a greater way. So that's starting this Wednesday night, also at 6 o'clock. If you saw the back table, there's going to be more candy. Don't eat it. It's not for you to eat. It's oh, not for you to come by and grab some candy. So you <laughs> eat some sugar on a Sunday morning. Uh, we are starting our sign-ups for Nightlight. October 31st is an incredible night of giving and loving and really going after the head of the enemy and loving on people in our community and, and just letting them know the love of Jesus and the light of, of Christ that shines. And so we welcome you to partner with us. Uh, there are three one-and-a-half-hour shifts doing a lot of different things from serving food to people to uh, working security to uh, being a greeter in the front to working children's games, working in the prize area, uh, cleanup, bringing desserts. There's a lot of ways you can serve and help. And we'd love to have your help. You can sign up. It'll be the next four Sundays. We'll be uh, going after people. We need about 250 volunteers from about 12 to 15 churches that are doing this together. And uh, our church always responds so beautifully. We'll spend more time on that next week when we've got it. Michelle, come on up. Today, right before Pastor Charles comes up, Michelle's going to share with you about one of the ministries in our church. Uh, we often minister, share, and I say, and you can find a way to serve in our nursery, our children's ministry, youth, uh, and our sound. We kind of need it now. I mean, Leslie, it seems like you've been running PowerPoint for the last, last month. It, there's a lot of ways to serve in our church, and, and some of your efforts and, and your abilities can make it uh, easier on you if you, you choose that, the giftings that God's given you. And Michelle's going out there a really unique group of people who have an incredible amount of uh, grace and mercy and love and patience. And she's going to share with you a little bit about how you can be a part if you are called and if God puts it on your heart. But we're not here sitting out the SOS. We're here saying you may have a gift to feel a need in our church that you didn't even know about. So Michelle, share a little bit about what happens yeah. uh, three of our four Sundays, right? Uh, all four now. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. We're going into our fifth year, and what it is, it's a special needs ministry, and I would like to say it's just for children, but it's not, because we have ministered to adolescents, and we have one young man that is in our class, and so, you know, special needs ministry is a relatively modern mission field, I would say, and um, I think that um, unless you've been touched by a special need in a family or a disability, um, Sometimes some people can uh, be a little, that sounds bad, but ignorant about um, what the Lord says about us. And um, we're all commissioned to go out and spread the good news. And, you know, we believe that uh, Holy Spirit can reach out to every heart. And so um, I just want to share with you uh, 
my heartbeat. And um, what is Haven? So um, it's a labor of love ministry. Um, it's a mission field. And like I said, it's my, my husband and our church's heartbeat. It uh, started simply because um, my husband and I have four special needs children. And um, as two of my children grew up in nursery, um, we kind of noticed that things were a little bit uh, difficult for them, whether it was focus or loud noises or maybe sometimes some aggression. It just, um, it just didn't suit them. Um, it's not about isolation. It's not about separation. Um, it's, it's not about shame. I know sometimes families can feel that shame um, of difference. And you know, we are all made in the image of the Lord. And um, what we do in Haven is we want to reach your children um, to at where they live, where they where they learn. We want to be the face of Christ for them uh, for two hours. And we want to allow their parents to be in this facility together. Um, why do we do this? Because we've been commissioned to go out and spread uh, the love of the Lord. And um, like I said, that is to everybody. Um, special needs families are at a greater risk for divorce, for suicide. Um, parents, like I said, parents need to be ministered together. 90% um, of families that are touched by special needs do not go to church. Um, I spoke to the director of special needs at our little district, the Golden Valley Unified in the Ranchos, and there are 200 students enrolled actively in special ed. Um, 90%, 180 children that are not going to church, aren't learning about Jesus. And if you're a unified 20,000, okay, that's 1,800 children, maybe more, um, that are not hearing about Jesus. <laughs> And our special needs community, um, this church, the children that we teach to in there, can be that connection. Um, please do not ever think that because your child or another child cannot speak, that Holy Spirit is not ministering to them and they can't be effective. And um, so that's what we do. Um, if you have a child that you think um, might benefit from Haven, um, Please don't hesitate to call me, contact me, pastor. They, they know how to get a hold of us. If you know anybody in the community, um, you don't have to have a diagnosis. I know it can be hard to get one, especially in places like four or five or in school age. Um, you just gotta learn more. We have pamphlets. And Haven is right by the chapel. Um, and then we need volunteers. We want to grow this ministry. Two of my boys are going to be going into junior high, and we need to know what that's going to look like. We want to partner with our pastors, and you know, when they were in, you know, young, uh, it was appropriate for them to play with Play-Doh and you know, listen to our lessons and color. But as they get older, we need to know what that's going to look like. So we need help, and um, we can we'll train you. You just need to have a passion and a fire and that heartbeat, and to believe that connection that we were. Okay. Thank you. As you can see, she has four special needs kids. The, the highlight, the all caps is on bold, is on the special, the underlined, and the italicized because these kids are awesome. They're so beautiful. And me and Mason share a birthday, and uh, he's my birthday buddy. And uh, like I said, this is nothing, and we never want to say guilt you into something. This cannot be. This has to be something that begins to. Stir in your spirit. And you go have a conversation. And you go, they're not going to throw you in there without help. You're going to get trained. You're going to be with someone who's already doing it. And then and then you're going to be a part of a team that, like she says, not only ministers to the children, but ministers to moms and dads, the grandmas and grandpas. Amen? And bless you, Joe. Appreciate you and all your family, the love and passion you bring us about. As our ushers come forward, we get ready to receive uh, our missions offering today. We just want to ask God's blessing over our missions and uh, their effectiveness throughout the world. And as we do that, um, and as we release them to go and, and receive that offering, Pastor yeah. Charles will be coming up and ministering you today. Father God, we thank you so much for your love for our, our world as we spoke about today. We are just a part. We 
we get isolated sometimes in this nation with all of our needs. But now there are so many other nations with so many great needs, with so many opportunities to see them come to know you as Lord and Savior. So God, it's our heart today that you would use our missions and our missionary efforts to uh, see the gospel spread and people come into their destinies. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you go today. sanctuary right now. If it's under your chair, you win. And you get to run it up to me, wherever it is, wherever you find Is it back there, Al? Did I leave it in the sound booth? Maybe. It's a black swell water bottle. If you find it, just, just pop up really quick. Not ours. You'll win a prize. All right. And if you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Esther. When the weather changes, so does my body. Does anyone else go through that? My little, okay, I'm on 15,000 vitamins right now. Uh, elderberry is my best friend. Water. I would say sleep, but that doesn't happen in my house. Not right now. Um, we are T minus 30 days from this election, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm so, I need this thing to end now. You think you're tired of all the commercials and stuff, but I'm being the guy that has to talk about it. So. Um, but I appreciate your guys' support and continued prayers. My wife and I, we need it. Uh, she's home right now with two boys with runny noses that are really green. And as the nursery director, you can't have the double standard uh, and break your kids with the runny noses. So we're praying for Jason and Roger. Um, but we're, 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 we're having a great time. My wife and I just celebrated nine years of marriage. And so I'm excited about that. I'm wearing this goofy hat today because today is my best friend Jason Lawrence's birthday. We're celebrating, they're out of town. He's 38, but uh, I, I, I didn't lose the bet. I just want to show him that I love him. And uh, he's been in my life now for 33 years. I love that man. That's my brother. I, I, my mom and dad didn't have any other children that were boys, so I got to choose my brother. And, I'm stuck with it. I just, I'm, I'm a faithful man. I, when I make a choice, I stick with it. It's as goofy as he is, but I love him. He and Candy are out celebrating his birthday. Uh, I think that's awesome. Uh, I want to brag a little bit on, on our, our youth ministry. Last Sunday night, if you weren't here, we had just a great time hosting several youth groups throughout the city of Madera. And uh, what it was, was it was just kind of a, a night of worship. We really didn't know really what to, I mean, it's all about branding and stuff in ministries today. I just wanted Jesus. And, and so we just wanted to come together and encounter Jesus as, 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 as a generation. And it's, it's, we're trying not to even call it a youth event. There were at least 25 to 30 college age kids here. And uh, there was adults here. Uh, there, it was just people that wanted more of Jesus. And I, I, we pushed over 100 people here last Sunday night. And uh, I'm telling you, the, the power of God was in the room, and, and we loved it. And so we're going to continue to pursue it uh, on, on Sunday nights. But our next event won't be until December. Uh, but if you guys are, are curious as to what it looked like, uh, check out our Facebook video. Uh, we, we've got it up there. I was supposed to show it today, uh, but we've got other stuff going on today. So you can go there. But I'm really proud of our team, uh, our worship team, Olivia, Mazzy, and Apollonar. They really put it together, and uh, they did a phenomenal job. Uh, God's doing something in, in a generation right now in the city of Madera, uh, and, and, it, and it's, it's not just 
a youth thing. I really feel like God is is is, is shifting for those that are hungry to seek His face and not just be a part of an event. And and so I think that that's important. At least it is for me uh, because I've been to a lot of events that are charismatic and are big, uh, but there's nothing like just having that moment with with Papa, uh, where it's just you and him, and and you feel him and you tangibly know that you're being touched by the Lord. And that is so important, especially to this generation, as Pastor Lance was talking about earlier, with so many questions and, and so many different things that are that are placed on their shoulders. Tonight, we, we would normally have our youth ministry. I would normally be taking out your high schoolers and junior highers right now. But tonight, we're going to go out and play some volleyball at 4 o'clock at uh, Steve uh, Gugliamani's house, Coach Gugliamani's house. They've got volleyball courts. We're actually joining up with four other youth groups. And so we're just going to kind of continue the kumbaya. And, and that love, uh, because I think it's important right now. I really do. And so if you're teenagers wondering why we're not meeting here tonight at 630, that's because we're, we're out playing volleyball tomorrow. Come talk to me afterwards, and then I'll make sure that Mr. Harry gets that information for you guys. All right. I, uh, I, I want to kind of try to wrap up what Pastor Lance has, has just so eloquently been putting out to you guys over the last several weeks. The Church Unleashed. I, I love activation. I'm a big fan of activation. To me, the Bible is way more fun when we can activate it and it becomes tangible and alive. Just like yesterday, huh, Lou? Man, I'm telling you, when, when we can activate the Word of God, all of a sudden, it's not boring anymore. Wow. All of a sudden, it becomes way more fun. Yeah. So I'm going to try... To, to, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna recap anything that you guys got to go and, and watch it online. But I, I want to try to just sort of tie it up a little bit and maybe charge the church with even more energy. And 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 that's why I wore my shirt today. This has been my saying all year long. You got to keep that same energy because there's a lot. Of, this is my campaign slogan, just between my my inner squad, my inner team. Because there's a lot of people that come into city hall when things aren't going good. And I said, okay, I need you to keep that same energy when things are going good. When, when things are going, I need you to keep that same energy. So when you shouting down the preacher today, when you were saying amen and hallelujah, y'all got to keep that same energy when we leave here. And you, and you go to the Chico's and you go to South's and you go to keep that same energy, family. Because it's, 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 it's good in here and it feels right. But y'all need to keep that, same, keep that same energy tomorrow morning when the alarm goes off. Right? And it's 545, or if, you know, and you're like, oh. Y'all got to remember, keep that same energy when you was hallelujah and, and, and woo! You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all got to, so that's why this is our mantra right now, my, my inner squad. We, we just, we, we always say that, keep that same energy, because you, you're going to need it come Friday, come Thursday. All right, good. All right, let's go to Esther chapter 4. I'm going to start in verse, uh, chapter 4. Bible too. Look, look at my Bible. Look at this. I'm all over the place. Gracias. Let's start with verse 8. Let me um, let me recap really quick the book of Esther. You guys are probably familiar with the book of Esther, but for those that, are, that may be joining us for the first time ever, uh, it's, it's a story about a girl who was named Hadessa. And she was orphaned at a young age. And you found my water bottle. Come on. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Oh, my child. Where'd you find it? That doesn't matter. Who cares? Oh. <laughs> um, Hadessa was, was orphaned at a young age. Her mom and dad were killed. She was adopted by her cousin, Mordecai. They were Jews living in Persia. And, and that, was, that was a scary thing. Uh, we'll talk about why later. And there was a king, the king of Persia, and, and he had a beautiful queen. And this king, and I'm just going to paraphrase this really quick, this king was known to have really great parties, right? Some of you guys last night watched the fight, you guys had a great party, and, and, and a barbecue, maybe celebrate something. But this, this particular king enjoyed his parties. In fact, he had a party that was a week long, and at the, set, the last day of the party, the Bible says that he had a little too much wine. And after having a little too much wine, he called for his wife, the queen, to come, the Bible says, so he could show her off. And the queen appropriately said, I don't think so. Now, the king didn't take too kindly to that. 
The king said, no, I want to show you off. But she still didn't come. She said, no, thank you. And that angered the king, and it set into process several new laws and several new governances that said, when the king calls you and you don't come, you're out. So she lost being the queen. She was no longer the queen, and then the, the, the royal, the, 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 the people in the king's court decided they were gonna do like a special edition of The Bachelor, and, and they went all over the land looking for the most beautiful women in the world. Come on, ladies, how, much, how fun would that be at The Bachelor? Marry the king. And so, talk about singles ministry. Uh, we have, there's a good plug, yes sir, there's a good plug, hallelujah. I, uh, and so I'm, I'm reading, and, and, and these, these, these people are going all over the land looking for the most beautiful women, because that's what the king deserved. And, and they would take them, and, and then they would pamper them for a year. One whole year, these women were, were, were basically getting spa treatments every day. I, I, I mean, they were being taught how to be a queen. They were being taught how to, how to, how to respect a man and, and all of these things, but it took a year. Now, Esther was one of them. Hadessa, who would later be called Esther, she became one of them. And so for a year, she's kind of going through these, these, these classes, these trainings, the, 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 the aromatherapies, the spa treatments, and she, she's getting ready, she's getting prepared to be presented to the king. And then the king's gonna choose who will become the next queen. Well, he chooses Esther. He chooses the orphan Jew. Not knowing that she was the orphan Jew, she had, she, she had fooled him because she was so beautiful, she's gone through these classes, she's done everything so perfectly that the king said, I choose you. Out of all the women in the land who have been selected, I choose you. And, and, and so the story continues as she lives in the king's court that there was a, a, another man who, who was not a good man. And, and he would move his way up the king's court and he had an agenda. And his agenda was to kill all the Jews. And, and Haman was his name, and, and he would become friends with the king, and he was trusted by the king, and then he would he was trying to convince the king to decree a, 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 a statement that said all Jews so should, should die. And in fact, he actually put a bounty out on Jews who could die. One of them was Esther's cousin, Mordecai. So this is where we're gonna pick up the story. Mordecai is now caught wind that there's a bounty out for his head. And it's whether you think it's fair or not, this is life. This is, this is sort of where Esther's at. Esther's the queen. Mordecai is, is just another man outside living life, right? Living my best life. And that's where we're gonna pick the story. So I think I said verse eight. Actually, let's, let's start in verse five. How about that, verse five? I'm gonna read for a while, so hang in there. Esther summoned Hattah, one of the king's eunuchs, assigned to her, and dispatched him to Mordecai to learn what he was doing and why. Verse 6, so Hattah went out to Mordecai in the city square in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened, as well as the exact amount of money that Haman had promised to pay the royal treasury for the slaughter of all the Jews. Verse 8, Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa, ordering their destruction so that Hattat might show it to Esther, explain it to her, and then instruct her to approach the king, implore his favor, and plead with him personally for her people. Verse nine, Hattat came and repeated Mordecai's response to Esther. Verse 10, Esther then told Hattat and commanded him to tell Mordecai that all the royal officials and the people of the royal provinces know that the law applies to every man and woman who approaches the king in the inner court and who has not been summoned, the death penalty. Only if the king extends the golden scepter will the person live. I have not been summoned to appear to the king for the last 30 days. Say, whoa. whoa. Esther's response was then reported to Mordecai. Mordecai told the messenger to reply to Esther. Now this is, this is where I wanna focus. Don't think that you will escape the fate of all the Jews because you are in the king's palace. Yikes. If you keep silent at this time, let that sink in for a second. Liberation and deliverance will come to the Jewish people from another place. But you and your father's house 
will be destroyed. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And then in verse 15, Esther sent this reply back. Come on, aren't you glad there's text messaging now? We don't have to send people back and forth and back and forth. And he said, she said, and he said. Verse 15, Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. And this is what I love. Go and assemble all the Jews who can be found in Susa. Fast for them. Don't drink, don't eat for three days, night and day. And I and my female servants will do the same. After that, I will go to the king, even if it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Come on, family. This passage is so rich. I could preach this for weeks, but I'm not. I'm going to try to do it in 15 minutes. <laughs> so rich. I love this story. And I know it's funny because, because it's a, 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 a woman, a heroine. It's supposed to be for the girl story, but I've adopted it as my own. Because I love the courage of that. I love the idea. I love the idea that this man is asking of this, of, of not, he is not asking his, his, his cousin for a favor. Hey, hook me up. No, he is asking the queen to put her life on the line to save generations of people. And he knows that. And she doesn't take it lightly. She doesn't just say, ah, you know, that Haman, he's crazy. Don't listen to it. Don't, ah. No, no, she takes it serious. Serious enough to say, you know what? Gather all the Jewish people, not just your best friends, not just the people you know at church, not just the ones who you think love Jesus the most. Go and get as many Jews in the area as possible, and let's go fasting, and let's go praying. I love this passage because there's a lot of asking for prayer, and there's a lot of fasting going on. And I think it's a message that our church needs to hear more often than not. I know I have to. I'm preaching at myself this morning. I need this this morning. And, and I love it because Esther knows that I just can't walk into this situation. I've got to go well prepared. Because you remember what happened the last time the king got mad at the queen. And so she, she knows what's, what's at stake. But a move of God requires power from above, prayers, and we're asking for power of God to come down, right? But a move of God is not just the prayers of a righteous man that go up to heaven, and then we wait for the, for the goodness of the Lord to fall down. But I believe this, that a move of God requires power from above, but also human sweat, blood, and tears, and action. Amen. You gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta do something. You can't just rely on a power to fall from heaven. Not that it can't, not that it won't, but I believe that a real move of God requires people to begin to move for God. Amen. The first thing, I, if you're writing notes, I said this last time I ministered and I can't get it out of my head. It'll be my next teacher. Don't pray for what you're not ready to pay for. Don't pray for what you're not ready to pay for. And this is something that I, 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 I might preach it for the next year. I don't know. I'll sneak it into a sermon every, every chance I get. But this is what we need, generation. This is what America needs right now, generation. We're, we're praying for God to move. But then we keep going back and doing the same thing we were doing yesterday and the day before and the day before that. We're asking for a move of God in a generation of young people. But yet we're scraping and scrimping, trying to get people to join us in our mentoring program, trying to get people on campuses for adopted school. I'm having parents come to me and tell me, man, my kid, my teenager, my this and that. And I'm like, how much time are you spending with doing the word of God? What are you doing to teach them and train them? Well, I don't know. We get home and everybody's on their texting and we all text and we all on the phone. I'm trying to save my marriage. What are we doing to save your marriage? You calling me the pastor at midnight when I'm trying to sleep with my wife because of my marriage, but y'all trying to get me. I can't fix your marriage. You're not ready to fix your marriage. If you're going to pray for it, you got to be ready to pay for it. Oh. Esther, I don't know if she was ready to pay for it yet. 
That's why she said, let's pray for it. I got to, I got to, I got to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to, ooh, we got to, okay. Mordecai was ready to pay for it. He was ready, man. In fact, that's why he said, look, don't think that you're good. You'll die too. Come on, that's a tough word. That's a tough word. I'm, I'm so glad I got people in my life that give me tough words like that. That don't wait for a season. That don't wait for the right time. Mordecai said, listen, it's this or that. It's life or death. What are we going to do, family? She said, oh, we got to fast and pray. We got to fast. I love that that was the answer. I love that that was the answer. That the answer wasn't, let me get on my social media really quick and see what everybody else is saying. Let me see what CNN's reporting. Let me see what Fox News is saying. No, no, no. The answer was, let me fast and pray really fast. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. Aren't you glad that the queen didn't have an answer right away other than, let me fast and pray. Now, let me fast and pray. We got we to gotta be ready to pray for, pay for what it is we, we pray for. Number two, what is given to you has to come through you. You... You use what you have to help other people. That this is something that's dear to my heart. I, I believe that there's lots of ways of giving resources, financially, time, energy. As long as you're using what God has blessed you with to bless others with and to really help them, to really engage them, to really disciple them, to really grow them, to really teach and train and, and, and put others in an opportunity to where they can encounter the same love of God that you encountered in order for you to get and attain what it is you're actually using to bless them with. Yeah. There's, there's this quote from, from Pastor Jensen Franklin uh, up, on, up on the screen. Go ahead, that first slide. I made a slideshow. <laughs> I got one. Here it is. If you're not careful, you will become so pampered and comfortable spiritually that you'll forget there's a godly reason for being where you are. This woman was being pampered for over a year. This woman got used to that life. You ever get used to that life? Look, look at the empty chair next to you. Somebody's used to that life. Somebody's got used to waking up on a Sunday. Somebody got used to having an NFL back. Somebody got used to staying out late on a Saturday night. Somebody got used to go ahead and getting turns on a Friday and Saturday night. Somebody got used to, this woman was used to getting pampered. She was used to the nice oils. She was used to the massages. She was used to things, ding-a-ling-a-ling, I'm thirsty, bring me something to drink. And then all of a sudden, the man comes to her gate and says, whoa, woman, wake up! She goes, whoa, from what? I'm in this life now. This is my life now. I've earned this life now. Family, you may think you've earned it, but you got to remember why you're there. God may have put you in that life for such a time as this. I'm not mad if you had the fight last night and there was bruise going on, but I'm mad that you didn't invite the people that you had to fight here this morning. God will never call you to do what someone else is supposed to do. Never. In fact, comparison is what kills destiny. He's not going to call you to do what he's calling me to do. So quit comparing yourself to how I do it and when I do it and where I do it. What are you doing what you're called to do? Are you doing what you're called to do? As big or as small as you think it is, God doesn't have big or small assignments. You know what he has? Assignments. Amen. Obedience, faithfulness, holiness equals proof of God. He doesn't have little assignments. He just has your assignments. And the Bible said, the Mordecai said, it's either coming from you or it's coming from someone else. Come on, family. I'm here to tell you this morning, church, it's either coming from you or it's going to come from someone else. You're either going to be that move of God or it's coming from someone else. But God's got to move. God's got to move. He's not waiting for a Supreme Court justice. He's not waiting for a politician. He's not waiting for your great, great, great grandma. He's waiting for you. We are praying for a move of God. I believe you are the move of God. So I'm praying for you. Get up. Let's do this. I got a slide. I got another slide. Here we go. 
Two slides. This is James. James Harrison, ladies and gentlemen, from the great country of Australia. James is also nicknamed the man with the golden arm. James has an antibody in his plasma or his blood that actually helps create a treatment that saves babies' lives. There are babies that, and, and maybe some of you pregnant women know this, that if, if, if you have the same blood type or, or something similar to the blood type of the mother, you can actually reject the mother's blood and, and it becomes a fight now for the fetus because the mom is trying to act, the mom's body is actually trying to kill the fetus and the fetus is trying to stay alive. His blood type actually uh, 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 balances all of that and wow. because he's given blood over a thousand times, he saved 2.4 million babies' lives. Wow. He's retired. About four months ago, he reached the age of 81. He's no longer deemed old in the, oh, you're too old. <laughs> Keep your blood, homie, you don't need it. Uh, but, but up till then, up till then, he, he was given regularly. I, I think he set a country record of 1,162 times he gave blood. Only 10 times in his left arm, all of the rest in his right. <laughs> I, I shared this story because I believe God can bring good out of good. Now see, that didn't give a shout. Because you wanted me to say, God can bring good out of your bad. And then everybody would be like, <laughs> Yes, Lord, bring good out of my bad. But see, I said, God will bring good out of your good. Because see, sometimes, sometimes we, we forget. It's okay to have good. It's okay to be good. It's okay you drive a good car. It's okay you have the good house. It's okay you have the good food. It's okay you have the good clothes. What you doing with them? God can bring good out of good. He doesn't need to always bring good out of your bad. He will bring good out of your bad. That's a gift. But I'm talking about bringing the good out of your good. See, sometimes we forget that our good is actually meant to bring more good. And I'm okay with you having good. You've got to learn to be good with having good. God can bring good out of your good. It's good that my man was given blood. You know why he started giving blood? Because at the age of 16, he found himself in a hospital at Staples, Andrew Staples. And he said, whoa, why am I still alive? And they said, well, because of blood. You gave him the whole you know, spill as a teenager. You don't really think about giving blood as a teenager. Then at the age of 18, when he became of age, he said, I got to start giving blood. It wasn't until he was in his 20s that they realized, hey, man, that's a special blood. You want to keep giving? He goes, oh, yeah. That's a good idea. And they started leaving these babies that he saved. Holy moly, God was doing good out of his good. He was going to give blood no matter what. Then he finds out that his blood is actually saving lives. Aren't you glad for the blood that saved your life? Come on, aren't you glad for the blood that saved your life? Number three, you're not scared. You're probably not doing it right. <laughs> You want to know where your walk is with the Lord? You want to know how close you are? If, if there's no element of risk in your walk right now, you might not be doing it right. If there's a little element of risk in your walk, yeah. Because now you've got to lean on the one who calls himself Allah. Now you've got to lean on the one who says, rest me. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your comforter. I'll be your mighty fortress. I'll be the one who goes before you. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear people because there's one greater, stronger, mightier, bigger, amazing, full of love, grace, mercy, kindness, power, strength. No fear, but yet an element of risk. If Esther just showed up, she could have what? Could have died. She could have died. Done. But she didn't. Prayed, she fasted, and she joined with others to do the same. One goal. What was the goal? To save the race of the Jewish people. Not to get a raise, not for the protection of my baby while they go to kindergarten. To save a human race. I'm telling you, not that God isn't, again, 
it, it, there's no big or small assignments. There's just assignments. There's no big or small prayers. There's just prayer. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, family, you were created for such a time as this for something way bigger than what you really thought you were born for. Way bigger. Because it feeds it. That's why I chose the scripture that I chose that's on your ribbons for this anniversary. Because whatever you're dreaming, he's dreaming bigger. Whatever you're thinking, he's thinking bigger. Because he created you to be bigger. Amen. You see, Madeira's cute, family, but you're called to the nations. You see, the nations are good, family, but you're called for generations upon generations upon generations upon generations. You see, Louis thought he was going to the park yesterday to minister to some people about Jesus today. But what he didn't realize is that Louis actually was called to the park to minister to people who were going to change their lives because they're going to change the lives of their grandchildren's 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 grandchildren. And that's why we don't stop. Valley West, that's why we don't stop. We got to keep dreaming. We got to keep moving. We got to keep pressing forward. We got to keep moving on. Because that is the call to the church. Our job is not to build the church. Our job is to build the kingdom. He will build the church. If, 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 if you're worried about the paint job, if you're worried about the music, if you're worried about the chair, if you're worried about the offering and stuff, if you <coughs> yeah, they pay. <laughs> If this is the stuff that worries you, he'll take care of it. He's more worried about why there's an empty chair next to you. The kingdom has to get built by you and me. We'll pray for the power of God, but we got to do our part. We got to put our blood into it. My man gave his blood to save another person's life. So let's just pretend blood for the rest of this talk equals life. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? So we need blood to live? Blood is a life source? So let's look at Esther chapter 5. Let's see what happens. <coughs> On the what day? Esther dressed up. She was looking good. And she stood in the inner courtyard. Some of us need to get dressed up. Like, we're not scared. Some of y'all need to get out of the PJs. Some of y'all need to do your hair. Some of y'all need to just quit moping around. Some of y'all need to get dressed up and get to the inner court and stand there like you belong. Like you somebody. Quit waiting around for somebody to push you. And when you get dressed up, get looking nice, get to where you know you belong in the inner court and stand there. I'm sorry. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the royal courtroom facing its entrance. As soon as he saw Queen Esther standing in the courtyard, she won his approval. The king extended the golden scepter toward Esther and she approached and touched the tip of the scepter, verse three, and this is what I'm talking about. He said, what is it, Queen Esther? Whatever you want, even to half the kingdom, will be given to you. What is it? What is it, Julie? Because whatever you want, even half of the kingdom will be given to you. What is it, Sherry? Because whatever it is, or if, even if it's half of my kingdom, it's going to be given to you. Because that is the type of daddy I am a part of. His family. I serve that daddy. That's my, that's my king. I don't know what king you serve. That's my king. That's what you have access to. I don't, we, we, they, they still. Maybe there's too many people that didn't think they belonged in the inner court here today. I don't think so, though. I, I don't think so. Let's, let's talk about this life, this blood. Last slide, I think it's free. It's football season, family. <coughs> This is Jim. Say hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Jim Becker is a longtime Green Bay Packer fan, as most people are that live in Green Bay. Jim came back from the Korean War and wanted to start watching games. So he would sell his blood to buy tickets. In fact, he brags about buying the ever so talked about ice bowl for $12. <laughs> Jason Inker's story. Here we go. 
He sold his blood for tickets, only to find out that he actually had a, uh, a, a, a genetic disease. Uh, hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis is where the body absorbs way too much iron in the blood. Way too much iron. He wanted to see the Packers so bad that he would sell. Come on, any football fans in here? He would sell his blood to go watch football. Wow. Family, what would you sell your blood to go see? How many of y'all are selling your blood to give to the mission? Oh, I'm not even going to go there this morning. That's bad. That's, that's way manipulative. And this Holy Spirit just like, what? shut me down real quick. Real quick. I'm not that type of preacher, family. I'm sorry. I, I'm not. But, but this guy... This guy gave his blood just to go watch football, only to find out later in his 40s that he had this genetic disease. It's actually the disease that killed his father. And, and, and he didn't know about it because it, it takes time. The, the body just slowly stores iron and iron. Here's how the doctors cure it. You ready? Give blood. He said, how do, how do y'all know I have this disease? I said, well, we, we've done some tests. We see, you know, tests are now a little bit better than when, they, when you were little. And we found out that you have this, this genetic disease, but you've been able to control it. And here's why, because you go watch the Packers. Because <laughs> you give blood to give money to buy your tickets to go watch the Packers. So you've been able to stabilize your, your disease. He goes, huh, giving blood regularly to go watch Packers keeps me alive. Luke chapter 9, verse 24, and this is what we'll close with. Here comes the worship team. For whosoever would save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save. My man Jim was giving his life, he was giving his blood, he was giving his life in order to do something that he wanted to do. Little did he know that by giving his life away, he was literally saving his own. Literally saving his own. Otherwise, iron would have built up his vital organs and he would have died at probably the age of 40 something. I'm here to charge the church with everything that Pastor Lance had shared over these past several weeks. With all this understanding and knowledge and, and, and now hopefully a compassion for the lost, for our neighbors, for our co-workers, for the assignments that we've been given. Now with this compassion, Esther was willing to give her life to save a life. Mordecai, was in her corner saying, listen, this is going to be good. This is going to be victorious. Do it, Esther. Do it! And Esther sought the face of the Lord still. She was encouraged by her cousin. She sought fasting and prayer. Her servants sought in fasting and prayer. And undoubtedly, the Holy Spirit came upon her and said, no more pampering. No more. You were chosen for such a We love to preach that. We love to say that. We love to put it on Letterman jackets as athletes. But to believe it, to walk it out, to be it, that is the call of the church for 2018. We don't need another definition of Christianity. We need a demonstration. We need a genuine demonstration of power, of love, of grace. Let your good be good for the Lord. And if you feel like you don't have a good, join me in a time of fasting and prayer. Let's seek the Lord for the opportunity that he gives you to stand before a king. And the king says, 
as soon as you came in the door. How many of you are jealous for that type of attention? As soon as you walk in the door, you have the king's eyes on you. That wrecks me right now.
Oh, okay. So he'd be happy to be here next week. But the following week, they'll be on their honeymoon. Another one that's showing some interest is uh, Little Christy, Chris. Uh, his mama's asking about maybe doing some little something here or there. 